life right now is a movie. Ah, yeah. Wish the soundtrack was groovy. Too bad I'm frustrated. I'm moody. Ah, yeah. Just need a happy ever after. What's up, fellow citizens of the world? Jordan Patrick here, and welcome to my channel. So for those of you who are new, I'm French American living abroad in France since 2014. I first moved here when I was 23 to be a student and then I've been working here ever since. I recently became French et voila! I make videos on culture, travel, lifestyle, and the French nationality. And maybe you've seen my Instagram and wondered, how the heck can this guy afford to travel so much? How does he even have that much time off of work to travel? Or simply like, how does he have the balls to solo travel as much as he does? Well, I'm here to answer those burning questions, so let's get started. On y va, c'est parti. So let's start with how I managed to afford these travels. So I've created an acronym for you guys, and that is FIBS. F-I-B-S, flexible, investigate, budget, and sacrifice. Wait, how do I only have three fingers? <laughs> to install it in your brain, I'm gonna do that again. Flexible, investigate, budget, sacrifice. So these are the four principles that I live by when planning a trip, and I'm gonna go through each one and explain what they mean. So for number one, we have being flexible. If you're looking to save some money or get a good deal, then allow your schedule to be slightly modified from the original plan. That might mean one extra day in one destination and one less day in another. Being flexible can be a huge advantage and benefit when it comes to your economics, especially if you're planning a long trip with many different destinations. You'll be hopping from place to place to place, and before you book anything, make sure you do your research to see how much it's gonna cost in each place, and if you can get a better deal for flights or trains, buses, whatever it is, in between destination to destination. So hypothetically, let's say you're going from LA, you're flying into Paris, and then you plan to do Brussels, Amsterdam, Berlin, and then you're going back home. But don't just start booking, you know, Paris to Brussels, Brussels to Amsterdam, and doing all that like back to back like that. First, take a step back, look at your original plan, maybe that's three days in each place, but then check, maybe it's really expensive to travel on Sunday, so maybe you push that back until Monday, and then, you know, everything else kind of falls along. Maybe you end up spending two days in one place, four days in another place, but you could save hundreds of euros by doing this. So when it comes to flights within Europe, three to five months in advance, you are good. Like you're gonna get a good deal. It's gonna be very cheap. And when it comes to trains, that's a little different because the schedule usually doesn't come out until three months before. So that you might have to do a little bit closer to your travel time. And to know the best way to travel between one destination and another, I use Rome to Rio, which is a site where you put in two destinations and it'll give you all the best availabilities and how much it costs. So if you wanna go from Paris to Brussels, it'll show you that, okay, you can fly for maybe 100, you can take a train for maybe 80, or you can take a bus for 10 euros. You can see the different options. It'll also tell you how long it's gonna take. So this is what I always use and it works really well. So for number two in the FIBS acronym, it stands for investigation. Now I used investigation because it works better in the acronym, but it really is talking about research. So do not be stingy or quick on your research because we are trying to save that cash. I use a various number of different websites and apps to look for the best deals. I've already mentioned Rome to Rio, which is one of my favorites. Skyscanner is another one, Booking, Google. I use all these different platforms. And just because something seems good and cheap, does not mean you can't find it for even better and cheaper. I always recommend using private browser when searching for flights or trips or deals or any of that kind of nature because your computer will remember all those tiny little cookie crumbs and you don't want it to recognize you coming back searching for the same thing because it will raise that price. So in general, I usually start with Rome to Rio just to see the different options of flights, 
trains, bus, to see which one makes more sense. If it's a longer trip, then of course it's gonna be a flight. Skyscanner is great because it will look at all the different platforms of all the different airlines and see which one is the cheapest or maybe which one is the fastest. Don't forget, use the private browser. Once I found one that I like, I go directly to the airline company website and book my flight directly with them because you don't want to be going through a third party like TripAdvisor, for example. My mom has a horror story when it comes to TripAdvisor because last year she was supposed to come see me in France. She used TripAdvisor to book her flights and the whole COVID thing happened. And because she had booked with a third party, they took forever to reimburse her. I think it was like nine months. So I use the same methodology when it comes to housing. So I use booking.com to book all of my housing on all of these trips because I really like the feature where you can put in if you want an apartment or if you're willing to stay at a hostel, which you're gonna be sharing common spaces with a lot of people, but it's a way to be cheaper. And this video is all about how I can manage to do all of these trips. And it's because I travel cheaply and sometimes I'm, I'm bunking in a room with 10 other people and other times I'm treating myself to an individual room or maybe a hotel, but that's pretty rare, to be honest. I spend a lot of time at hostels. And what's great about booking is that you can put all of your different preferences. It's gonna give you all these different options. Also, you can put in your budget, which is great. So yeah, I use booking for pretty much all of my trips and I trust booking much more than Airbnb because I feel like if you're an avid traveler and you've used Airbnb before, you might have been canceled on before and I used to be a host myself and I think I only had to cancel one time in my three years of hosting, but it's still pretty easy for people to change their mind or something comes up and they cancel. And so that's why I don't trust it as much as I do booking. Oh, a little side note when it comes to staying in a hostel, some people are going to be like, oh no, I don't want to share my space, whatever. I know that it's a little bit uncomfortable sometimes, but for the most part, people are really respectful, really nice and friendly. And a lot of times you'll have some solo travelers there that are just looking to, to meet some new people and to kind of exchange itineraries. If you think about it, if you're only in a place, let's say for three days, you're going to spend all of that time out in the city learning the culture experiencing that place and you're not going to spend much time at home anyway so if you can spend only 15 euros a night that's a really good deal if you're doing all these different activities because you're really there just to rest your head at night you're fine and if you use the locker your stuff will be safe you don't have to worry about other people the absolute cheapest route that you can go if you are really really bent on saving as much money as you can hostels are a great thing to look into it's pretty self-explanatory, but for all of these trips that I do, I budget months in advance to save that shit. I literally think of every single category or anything that could come up during that trip, how much I can spend for it and how much I need to save for it. So I am so organized when it comes to traveling. If we were to look at the budgeting schedule of a trip I have coming up this summer, I'm going to Northern Italy with a few friends and I told them like I'm willing to spend 40 euros, but that is like the average price per night. So some nights might be only 20 euros, other nights might be 50, but it all has to come out to be 40 per night. I told them, I cannot go more than that. This is my budget and I'm going to stick to it. The same thing goes with eating. So I have budgeted 35 euros per day. So what does that mean? That means that in the mornings, I have to have only a small breakfast, small lunch, if I'm going to go out to a restaurant that night. If we're just going to get groceries and stuff for a few days, that's fine. It's also going to mean that other days I can spend a little bit more on food that specific day. Same thing goes with activities, 20 euros per day for different activities, but I also figured that we're not gonna be doing activities every day. Some days we're gonna just go to the beach and that's it. When it comes to budgeting, make sure that you limit yourself. Different categories for, okay, how much can I spend in this particular place? And I think that this helps so much when it comes to budgeting because you're able to see where your money is going. You don't just open up your bank accounts and be like, holy, where did this money go? You're really limiting yourself, but in the best way that you can because you know where your money is going. For the last principle, we have sacrifice. 
Now this is one that you know people might overlook. It's not just about budgeting or you know you get your paycheck and then you put 200 aside for a certain thing. If you want to save as much money as you can before your trip, you need to sacrifice some things. I sacrifice every day. I sacrifice every month because for me, traveling is super important. That's not the case for everyone. Not everyone loves to travel or not everyone has that as such an important thing in their life. That's good for them. Maybe they love eating out at restaurants. I would say that that's very common here in France. That's part of the French culture. Also, when it comes to their grocery shopping, like they spend a lot of money on food because food is super important in the French culture. But for me, I put that aside. I have a very basic grocery list. I do not eat out at restaurants. It makes it very easy during COVID when restaurants are closed. That makes budgeting way more easier. But even when I was living in Paris and restaurants are open, I'm only maybe going to a restaurant once a week. And that's because I'm trying to save money for other things that are also very important to me. And that is traveling. It's important to look at all your expenses, things that you really don't need, and then cut those babies out of your list. Netflix is my go-to, and so I can cut out Hulu, Amazon, various other different platforms that I don't really need. These things add up. Maybe you see you're spending a lot of money on transportation, so maybe you wanna cut out driving a little bit, maybe take your bike a little bit more, or ride share, carpool with other people, that can also save you some money there. So look at all the various different factors in your life. Food is probably gonna be one of the biggest ones for people. Stop ordering Uber Eats. I have cooked all of my meals, lunches, breakfast, dinners, everything I've done at home since getting back from the US. The last time I ate anything that I didn't cook myself was in January when I was in California. So if you do that in all these different areas of your life, you're gonna find yourself saving a lot more money and budgeting towards your future travels. So now that I've covered fibs and the principles that I live by when it comes to planning my trips, it's time to answer the next question, which is how the hell do I have this much time to travel?